Jennifer, I'm going to go next to Ottawa as well. We have Jennifer joining us. Jennifer, what's your perspective? Well, I, I think I, you know, when you first came on the radio, I said, oh, that's a neat idea. And I, I think it um, comes from a good intention, but I actually have three, uh, three problems with it. Um, I guess the first is where do you draw the line and do you ban things like baklava on days that are supposed to celebrate uh, student diversity? Am I allowed to bring in the chocolate chip cookies that I made with chickpeas but not regular ones? And I thought it was interesting. Your other callers said, well, let's ban GMOs as well. Let's have tofu dogs. And I think, oh, my God, is there anything more disgusting than a tofu dog? <laughs> so I guess I'm sort of leading into that then is, I kind of see it as sort of like a, um, a diet approach where food becomes the enemy. And, you know, it's nice to celebrate with your friends at school for a birthday party. Uh, does it always have to be cupcakes? No, it can be something else. But to put down a blanket statement, I think, I know, it kind of takes the fun out of it. And food's supposed to be fun. Yeah, it's interesting. Making it kind of like food in the crosshair is almost yeah. becoming an enemy. Chris Croxall, do you want to respond to Jennifer's observations? Well, I, I know that without reading maybe the whole policy and looking at it, it may seem as if we're attacking food. I don't think that's true. Um, there can be special celebrations, and we would certainly say if the food was of um, maximum or moderate value, then that would be okay. What we want to do is remove those instances where only foods of minimum value are being offered to students nutritionally. So I think that's part of it. So we're not banning food, and in fact, we do want to celebrate food, as one of your other callers talked about, you know, the uh, really great food that is both tasty and fun, but also healthy for you. Okay, so help me understand this. You know what keeps flashing in my head? I mean, I grew up in an Italian household. My mother made everything, right? I mean, bread, everything. I ate healthy. I mean, I except for the occasional Nutella on bread, <laughs> which is not really a sandwich in ingredient. But, but you know my memory in, in this conversation? I'm thinking of the cupcakes that Mrs. Mariotti brought to school that had the little orange on, on Halloween, you know, with the little orange face, like the, the smiling back. There's something, there's something about how, how a kid reacts. Even we heard, um, you know, the, the woman talking about how thrilled her daughter was with the sparkly bits. I mean, how do you reproduce some of that? Because that really is special. There's something special about the, a child's reaction to a treat. Um, well, I, I do think you're right, and that's why we're not banning special days altogether. But what we are saying is that they, they need to be reduced. If you think of a regular primary class, you're probably going to have, it has a class size cap of 20, so somewhere around 20 children in that class. And if everybody brings cupcakes to school, that's 20 other days in the year that there are going to be cupcakes. If you add that of all the special um, days when hot dogs or pizza, some of our schools are doing that once a week, offering a special uh, food day. If you, if you add all of that up and you look at the unhealthy food that may be offered in that, we're not doing our kids the best. Too, you, too much the other way, you're saying. Yeah, so okay. if, you, if you take a look at it and you think about how can I have these special days but make them healthy. Like pizza is not banned. Pizza is still an option. Instead of pepperoni, you know, a lean meat like chicken or something on it or pineapple pizza or something that is not you know, on whole wheat crust, that's going to fit into the category of what we want to see in our schools. And then okay. if you team it up with something like veggie, you know, celery sticks or something like that, so the kids have, uh, you know, something on the vegetable side of it, where we're covering the food groups, but in a good way, it can work. Okay. Um, Jennifer, thanks for your call as well. Let's go next to Lisa. Lisa, where are you calling us from? Lisa, are you with us? No, I'm afraid we don't have Lisa on the line. And we are talking about how, what kind of reaction are you getting from parents? Uh, you said this is up for public discussion, and obviously we're getting sense even from our phone lines. People feel strongly about this. What kind of reaction are you getting from parents in Hamilton? Well, I think your, uh, your callers today are, are quite indicative of the kind of reaction that we're getting. Certainly some parents are, are welcoming this. Some parents are a little bit concerned uh, about certain aspects, um, you know, especially that we may be infringing on their right as parents to decide what their children eat. Um, there's issues and uh, concerns around fundraising because our schools do um, raise a lot of money with some of these campaigns and 
some people are concerned that if we change the campaign that the amount of money that will be raised won't be as great and that will be a detriment to the school in general in terms of you know purchasing learning resources and things like that so right. there's there's a number of areas that that are of concern and are coming up you know overall people are i think quite supportive in many ways but they're it, the, the problem is where do you draw the line? How many times in the year do you allow these things? What um, what kind of exemptions are there going to be to okay. this approach? Let's go back to our phones. Uh, Trish is online. Trish, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from <coughs> Peterborough. Okay, so do you have children? I have four sons. Okay, and how old are they? Uh, well, they're teenagers and uh, two are in university, but uh, we we do have, have, have tried to bring them up the, the same way that uh, this lady's talking about something that I highly commend her on. I give her courage. I give her A plus on stepping out and being a role model uh, above and beyond. Uh, sometimes you'll have to just conform to the way the rest of the school boards uh, are and I think that she is just amazing to, to have the courage to do this for three, three reasons. Um, first of all, I think that you can make healthy foods fun. As lots of, there's lots of different varieties of healthy foods that she's mentioned. Um, you know, you can have the uh, tropical fruit platters with a strawberry vanilla uh, yogurt dip that kids find special, memorable, and they will attach all that to their comfort foods and good memories. And um, also because I think learning how to prepare these healthy foods, it's it's going to teach kids how to make them tasty and nice. Um, You can make tofu dogs that are just way superior to the ordinary dogs, and that's just by adding a little bit of uh, no-fat mozzarella cheese, some specialty mustard on a fresh soft whole wheat bun uh, you know you know it could convert quite a few children and also teach them how to do it themselves and the other reason about that is that kids often when they make their lunches don't have time to to do veggies and dip and cut up fresh fruit and dip and that sort of thing and I know when my teenager does it um, he won't do that and if it's offered at the school um, he'll eat it and love it um, so that's so the other reason. And that's it, Trish, let me ask you, because four boys, how how easy was it for you, or did you have challenges with them along the way to to have them see your your way of wanting them to eat? Oh, it's it's been extremely challenging, and uh, the fact that they're all athletic and they burn off a lot of calories and need a lot of food. Yeah. Well, we spend an incredible amount of time uh, on lunches uh, at night, and then again in the morning. They they want fresh. Um, fresh food, fresh bread, fresh buns, fresh and all, yeah, all, the, all the good stuff in the morning. Just swallowing so. your refrigerator in a sense. Uh, Trish, thank you for your call as well. Let's go to Carol in Toronto. I think, Carol, you might have the last word on this today. Go right ahead. I taught uh, at a college, and uh, I was teaching a sales course. Unfortunately, my class was at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon, and I noticed the second and third class. <clears throat> Then my students were exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I went around the classroom and I said, okay, what did you have for breakfast? What did you have for lunch? And we talked about it. And I said, you realize that all of you are drooping here. Three of the students were asleep with their heads on the desk. I said, okay, instead of the next sales presentation, I'm going to change the assignment. I want you to teach me something about eating properly. Okay, that's next week's assignment. Okay, uh, Carol, we're almost out of time. So it, that was successful, I take it, when you educated it them? It was very successful. Okay. But we have to start that with with, with babies. And we, we can't, um, we have to educate parents that, that McDonald's and Wendy's and all that fast food junk with so loaded with salt. Okay, Carol, I have to hold you there because we have to wrap up. You can hear that music is dancing us off the stage. Chris Croxell, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much. Chris Croxell has been our guest. She's the superintendent of education for the Hamilton Wentworth School Board, and she had been telling us about this proposal uh, to improve the nutritional aspects of food being uh, served at schools in Hamilton. You can still reach us at TalkBack, one 591 4111 or send us an email at ontariotoday at cbc.ca. Tomorrow, well, we're still going to be talking about food, the last hurrah of Gourmet Magazine. Maybe you're clinging to your last copy or you're saying good riddance everything you need or want is online we'll open the phone lines on where you get your best recipes take care bye-bye